Hey there, year 901, Mr. Herman here, and this is exercise 4E, applications in three dimensions. Learning goals for this one is to know how to apply the trigonometric ratios to find an unknown and relate this to the original object. The success criteria for this lesson is to be able to visualize right angle triangles in 3D objects and to be able to draw and label right angle triangles formed in 3D objects. Applications in three dimensions pretty much summarizes exercises 4A to 4D in a more of an, an applicable sense. The reality is when we are trying to look for um, certain lengths or certain angles within a triangle, it's done within a 2D matter. So for instance, if we were given, this is a right angle triangle, and we were given an angle here and, and this length here, and we had to try to find what this length is, this is really simple. Okay, we apply a trigonometric identity of some sort. Uh, we can do this to find a length or an angle, um, but the essence of this is in two dimensions. The real life world, uh, unless you're trying to solve for something on a very basic flat, um, flat surface of some sort, uh, the reality is you'll be working in, um, in the three-dimensional world and this is where applications in three dimensions work and this is what we're going to be looking into so what i mean by three dimensions is a classic example example and my sketching is not the greatest so um just bear with me while i can so say for instance we have some rectangular prison that looks like this yeah um this is my my best interpretation of rectangular prison and say for instance, we have this corner here, uh, which is the, uh, I guess the bottom left of it, and this corner here, which is the top right. And we wanted to find what that internal length is. So from corner to corner. Um, <clears throat> and maybe what we were given was say this length, here and this angle which is in here how would you go about that what would you do in order to get that specific length these these are the type of questions that you um pop into or run into and i'm not going to attempt this type of uh question um other ones could be you might have and this is a, an example that we'll be looking into uh there might be a pole of some sort and there could be cabling um, that can hold it down. Say for instance, one there and one there. And you have to try to figure out where right angle triangles can be formed within here. So maybe we can have one that goes like this and maybe we can have one that goes there, like that. Um, this is the three dimension uh, formality that we're looking into um, it takes a while to to visualize this um, you will be sketching quite a bit uh, to interpret questions properly and to draw uh, effective diagrams it takes a bit of practice uh, but with the right skill set you should be able to tackle these type of questions so the key ideas for this one um, we're also going to be using trigonometry to solve problems but in this case we're going to um, solve three-dimensional problems and the three type of key ideas we want to focus on <clears throat> is to be able to visualize um, drawing any relevant two-dimensional triangles within a 3D object. Um, obviously using our trigonometric ratios or inverse trigonometric ratios to find the unknowns, what we're um, looking for within the question, and relating answers from the 2D diagrams to the original 3D dimensional object in the first place. So you'll probably draw a, a 3D diagram of some sort, try to pinpoint where the 2D triangle is, extract this um, in a 2D manner to solve for an unknown, and then relate it back or answer it back in word format to the original thing that we're looking for in the first place. There's only one example that uh, I'll be looking into, and this is taken straight from the textbook, a vertical mast, and a mast is just another word for um, a pole. They used to have masts on pirate ships that would hold the sails up, uh, but pirate ships aren't really used uh, 
pirates. <laughs> I guess they're not really around. Um, so more like telephone poles, um, anything to do with uh, support beams of some sort. Just think of a long vertical mast or a long pole. Okay. Um, so this is supported at the top by two cables reaching from two points. So these cables stretch down to the ground and there are two points and this is A and B. So right now I can already start to visualize what this is going to look like. If I have my mast here, my vertical point, and, and from the top down to the ground, we've got two points. This one is A here and this one here and I should just to make this um, a bit more consistent I'll actually make these lengths longer than the actual pole itself and this will make sense when drawing the diagram because it's going to be a bit tricky if it were the case so let's make these longer here that's much better this is point A and this is point B so these are these two cables <clears throat> that are securing this mast down to the ground. Um, the cable reaching from point A is 36 meters long. So, so this length from the top of the mast to point A, which is the bottom of the cable, is 36 meters <clears throat> and is at an angle of 48 degrees to the horizontal. So the horizontal is the flat ground. We obviously know that this is the ground here. So there is this point from the point of the ground where A is to the base of this mast. That angle in here, they're saying is 48 degrees. All right, what else can we extract from this? Um, point B is 24 meters from the base base of the mast. So if the base is here and we have this length there, here we go. Uh, this point is 24 meters away. So our right angle triangles, so there are two of them. One can be found here and one can be found so obviously we have these two dimensional right angle triangles put into a 3D context. And the little uh, key feature that I know that makes it um, 3D is the fact that these lines here run parallel with each other, the 90 degree symbol and the horizontal. Because of that, I can now kind of visualize that this is a, a 3D problem that we're dealing with, the diagram of it anyways. So there are two things that we're going to be looking for. Let's look at the first one. A, we're going to find the height of the mask, correct to three dimensional, three uh, decimal places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this information to this particular triangle here. I'm going to draw it in a 2D setting and relay the same information that we have here. This is 48 degrees. This is 36 meters. And what we're looking for is the height of the mass. So this is X meters here. What we do know, and I'm just going to write my Sokatoa. <clears throat> what we do know is that we have the angle that is opposite, or the line, sorry, that is opposite the angle. And we have the hypotenuse opposite the 90 degree. O and H use a sign. So the sign 48 degrees is equal to the opposite x over 36 or well, to obtain x this is 36 times uh, sine 48 degrees um, and it's asking for this to three decimal places so if we go our uh, calculator uh, not shift just doing 36 times the sine 48 degrees and this is equal to 26.753 26.753 and this is in meters now I'll just double double check make sure 753 critical digit here is 2 so that 3 stays the same 
So 26.753 meters. Um, therefore, the height of the mast. is 26.753 meters. Now, the second question, um, relatively simple to do, because again, we're just using basic trigon uh, a trigonometric identity. However, uh, you have to be careful with the accuracy of your answer. So what do I mean by this? Let's have a look at question B. What we are looking for is we're going to find the angle to the horizontal of the cable reaching from point B. So the angle to the horizontal, so the horizontal of the cable reaching from point B. So this is saying from there to there is the angle that we're trying to look for um, to two decimal places. So let's extract again the information that we do know. So we have an angle here that we're looking for. So we're going to be using an inverse trigonometric identity. We have 24 meters as given in the question. Now in order to find an angle, we need two lengths. It could be any two lengths. It's in triangle, we need two lengths. We've already found one of them and that's the height of the mass, which is this here. And this is 26.753. Now for now, Let's just write it as 26.753. Now you gotta remember this was rounded to three decimal places. On the calculator, it keeps going and going and going. In fact, uh, this is an irrational number. This this will just keep going and going and going, okay? Um, but we've rounded it to 26.753 meters. Now, when we calculate this, obviously we have to use this length, but we also know that 26.753 meters is the same, is the same as 36 times sine 48. In fact, this is uh, the, the the most purest form, most accurate form of what this height is. Okay, so I'm going to keep that just at the back of my head for now. Because um, I know I'm going to have to use this if I want to make it accurate. And I'm going to show you the difference between using the two. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's find this angle. We have the opposite and the adjacent. So we're using inverse tan. So the angle is equal to tan inverse of opposite 26.753 over 24. Now, when we put this into the calculator, let's do inverse tan, get a fraction 26.753. Try that again. 26, there we go. 26, 26, there we go, my goodness. 26.753 over 24. Close the bracket. And this is equal to 48 point. Now it's asking for two decimal places. So we look at our third, um, uh, the third number after the decimal place. This is a four. The critical digit is lower than five. So this will round to 48.10. 48.10 meters. However, this is not the correct, accurate answer. If we have found a length within a previous question that is going to be used for the next question, i.e. this length here, we have to use the most accurate or the most precise form of that measurement. And this purely has to do with accuracy, okay? Um, and there is a difference. If I were to use, instead of writing 26.753 in the calculator, I'm actually going to leave it as 36 times sine 48. So, my angle is 10 inverse, open bracket, 36 times sine 48, all over 24. 
and you will see even though it is the slightest difference um, within the measurement it uh, will determine whether you get that full mark or not okay so let's use let's clear that shift 10 uh, let's use 36 times sine of 48 and just make sure that it does open the bracket after the sign so you've got to close that bracket and then do over 24 and then close the bigger bracket okay if you leave that bracket um, open it will come up with an error of some sort 48.11 because of that five there that critical digit is five that will bump it up the zero to one so 48 point one one meters the slightest the slightest of differences here will determine the full marks or not for a question like this okay so this here whoops this here is our full answer so remember this is a word of question so we would say therefore um, and in this case, we're looking for, oops, this is not meters. This is an angle. Careful. We're looking for an angle, not an actual length. There we go. Luckily, I saw that now. So therefore, the angle. And I'll leave it as 48.11 degrees. Okay, and that concludes this lesson. Um, if you aren't aware of what's happening, we're just be going to focus on exercise 4A to 4E. Um, we're not going to look into the next set of work afterwards. We'll just keep it at that. If you have any questions, you know where I am. Just send me a message on Teams and uh, I'll see you in, if there is, another video. Potentially, I'm not too sure. Lockdowns be crazy, y'all. Have fun, guys. Enjoy the work. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.